Hello, dear viewers and listeners, somewhere at home. Uh, this is the latest uh, episode of the Free Marketeers podcast. I'm joined by Martin van Staden on my right and Christo Hatting, the project manager here at the FMF, on my left. Martin doesn't have a title. Yeah, no, yeah he's just no, a he's, generalist now. He's, he's just a person without portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> he's still an intern. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we just send him wherever. He, he brings us water and coffee. Oh, yes. You know, I'm the best dressed in the office. Uh, okay. Let's not talk about that. Uh, yeah, dressing for success. He hopes yeah. to be in our position one day. One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> so I thought today we would start talking about... Uh, uh, it's good that we laugh before these depressing topics. Yeah. But today I thought we would talk about uh, uh, yeah. Tito's plan. This, uh, if you remember, this uh, economic recovery plan that Treasury came out with um, a few weeks ago, uh, which was proposed, and then we were uh, we were all asked to comment on it, uh, and so everyone did comment on it, and so it had some very good things on it, including uh, selling off power stations, deregulating the labor market, mm -hmm. like things that the FMF has been calling for a long time, along of course with some bad ideas. Mm -hmm. So this um, it now seems that uh, President Ramaphosa has now said that uh, ESCOM is definitely not um, selling power st uh, selling coal power stations, which was a core part of the plan. In my view, it kills the entire plan. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, well, I don't know what you guys think. I mean, it's just it's just incredible that he would undermine his own finance minister like this mm -hmm. before the process is even completed. Mm -hmm. So also we we tell each other and probably the viewers not to put hope in singular people in government, but I <laughs> fell victim of this myself. I had hoped in Minister Mboweni, this of course does not mean that, the, um, that this is anything bad about his plan. It's more about the structure within yeah. which he operates in the system. Mm -hmm. um, and I read again today that the NEC, the ANC, NEC pretty much rejected yeah. his plan yeah. um, wholesale. So you, you wonder whether they're really concerned about the economic well-being of the country or not, yeah. as they say they are, and they talk about thing, improving things and fighting corruption and reforms and this and that, and they want to engage with South Africans and listen to all views and um, change things, but then they reject this sort of plan, which wasn't a hardcore radical libertarian yeah. document yeah. by any means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was quite, if you want to put it, sensible, middle of the road, that yeah. all, yeah. if you want to take that view. Um, so... I guess we shouldn't be surprised or disappointed. Um, it seems that the dominance strain in the ANC and other political parties is just for more state intervention and state control. Um, yeah, most people, really. Yeah, yeah. Having, to, having to sell off the power plants, for example, yeah. the coal-fired power stations would be admitting that they haven't uh, made a success of, of their, what is it, over now, 25 years of, of mm -hmm. rule. Yeah. So that uh, that obviously requires eating humble pie, and sometimes all of us have to do that, but they don't seem to want to do that in any sort of capacity. They yeah. just double down on what has come before. That's just my my view mm -hmm. on it. So yeah. I'm not too surprised, and I guess well, this, this was coming. Look, for me, it's, it's all ideological. So if you read about the National Democratic Revolution, again, something the ANC very freely admits to, mm. it's not a conspiracy theory or anything like that. Mm. You read that about it and they say very clearly the goal of the National Democratic Revolution is to centralize control of the professions, power supply, of infrastructure, mm. of the judiciary, etc., mm. etc., et basically everything mm. under the control of the central, central government, the vanguard party or whatever. Mm. And that is when you ever want to see the mandate that the government considers itself as having, you have to look at the National Democratic mm. Revolution, not the Constitution or anything like that. Mm. But this... Um, the goal of achieving control so that it can then pull the levers of, of power throughout society to achieve yeah. what they consider to be equality, yeah, parity, revolution, yeah. parity between, yeah. between all the different groups. So yeah. that is what the government does. And if you start selling power stations, and if you start encouraging private education, if you start um, somewhat deregulating labor, then you're moving in the opposite direction because you're giving control back to ordinary people, you're mm. decentralizing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised about this at all. I expected this from the start. I knew that Bueni was way too radical mm. uh, on, on the ASC. Yeah, yeah. For, for, <laughs> by, by their standards in, in his plans. Um, I don't know. Like, it seems like things need to get a lot worse mm. for, for the elite uh, before they say, wow, geez, we're really in a in a bit of trouble here so we need to do something radical and mm. very unpopular but mm. i don't think they're they're nearly there mm. yet and i wonder if that's uh 
maybe part of the reason for that is that they see that their political opposition is also in turmoil. Yeah. So they think this is the best time for them to just double down yeah. and uh, they'll they'll regain votes again. Mm. So yeah, it's it's not a good time in South African mm. politics. But mm. yeah, I mean, it is getting worse. So maybe that's the wake up call that, that we're waiting for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's a, I want to mention that point on revolution and stuff and how maybe the 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 dominant party at the moment and others consider state control, socialism, statism, call it what you like, they consider that revolutionary and game changing and mm -hmm. we just need more of control. There's nothing revolutionary about um, oppressing people, yeah. about controlling people, their lives, their decisions. Mm -hmm. Liberty is revolutionary yes, yeah. and radical. Um, progress in history has happened because of people having different ideas, yeah. breaking out of their chains, yeah. but both literal change and chains and metaphorical chains. Yeah. So I think socialists and, and people who want more government plans and control, they need to reassess how they mm. think of these concepts because it just continues the status quo mm. uh, of control. Yeah. And there's nothing, I don't know, there's nothing new about it. it just, maybe that's the thing. It sort of keeps people in the rut and keeps them de dependent on the state. Yeah, as, yeah. You, as you talked about education and the power oh. stations, if those things, as two examples, if those are privatized mm. in any way, we're not gonna, more people won't look to the, the government, whoever's in charge, mm -hmm. like it doesn't have to be the ANC, but whichever party's in charge, yeah. then they won't look to that anymore. Yeah. Um, no, just like uh, briefly on that, I'm, en I'm engaged in another Twitter debate with someone. Mm. Um, uh, so I criticized a certain uh, municipal mayor in so one of South Africa's uh, larger cities. Um, and uh, the you know, socialist... seats the FMA offices are located in. No, <laughs> um, but uh, one of his supporters uh, came and, and so basically I, I said that this this particular mayor had a, an affinity for socialism, mm. and now people are saying, how how is a socialist and like uh, he's trying to set things right after um, years of apartheid capitalism, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean this is the impression that that's mm. always created. Yeah. Apartheid was this free market system, but of course. They nationalized steel under apartheid. Mm. It was during, it was in 1933 that the airlines were monopolized. Um, there was price controls. Mm. Um, government had its own minds. Yeah. I don't mm. think government has its own minds now. Mm. So it's. No, there is a state owned mining company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the government literally controlled the means of production during apartheid. <laughs> so it was, per definition, a socialist to government. Uh, so, yeah, it's, as you say, it's not revolutionary. What yeah. we're doing now is something we've done at least for 200 or so years. Yeah. So, yeah, it's nothing new. I think we should be very wary of that sort of stranded themes of just wanting to fix things and make things work and mm -hmm. it matters the ends don't always justify the means you should look at how people are wanting to fix yeah, things yeah. if it's through i don't know attacking certain groups of people if it's through justifying oppression of one to the benefit of others mm -hmm. if it's play if it's using sort of scapegoats um and increasing force in different ways like municipal bylaws yeah. police roadblocks all this mm -hmm. sort of thing you know, that's that's heading towards a dictatorship yes. you know, very Absolutely. slowly but surely. And, uh, you know, if if the plan is to improve things through competition, privatization, um, I don't know, engaging your citizens, citizenry, that kind of thing, I think that would be good. We would of agree course. with that. We don't want to live in a in a lawless society. Um, I know we have an anarchist here and we can get into that, but... Um... No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> when you said lawless, because I didn't it's... think... No, 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 no. Uh... I didn't think, oh, of course, he's talking about climate change. Oh, well, I make the connection conceptually. <laughs> <laughs> Plot connection. <laughs> but yeah, I think it, the means that you employ to get to your your ideal society is is important. And we, we must be very careful of this idealism and utopianism with, with yeah. societies and governments. Um, but the it's idea itself to, should also be a moral idea. Yes, yeah. 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 But, uh, way too much is justified in the cause of progress and utopia and um, equality, equality. Mm -hmm. take your pick um, yeah. Yeah. yeah no it's a uh, it's, it's, it's depressing news but uh uh let's try something more cheerful now oh really <laughs> maybe that's why so, we laugh so much because we're going insane you didn't tell me about a cheerful topic <laughs> that <laughs> is that wow. <laughs> depends well, on it's all relative <laughs> it depends like if you, you it depends on how you look at things uh, it seems more state entities are now in financial trouble so if you hate the <laughs> state maybe you can say hey yeah. <laughs> the state is collapsing here yeah. yeah. say where the say uh, say where the services which is something that 
absolutely blew my mind. I've never heard of the weather service having financial <laughs> problems. Just goes to show how bad things are now. And States SA, which is like well, was sort of the one government agency that I liked mm. personally. But so this is, I, I guess I just want to, from you guys, a general point, the, the general point about these, all these instances going um, bankrupt around the same time. Like, is this just coincidence or is this something more to this? Why are all these entities all of a sudden going bankrupt? It's not just the SOEs, it's the entire government, it seems. Well, I mean, I, I haven't read about uh, these specific agencies, mm -hmm. so I don't know the details, but I'm, I think there is a pretty high chance, likelihood, that this is all about government or the economy basically collapsing, mm -hmm. right? As we sit here mm -hmm. right now, government is not um, getting or hitting its revenue targets. No. It doesn't have nearly enough money to cover everything it wants to do. Mm. Um, so I'm assuming that at some point in the last few years, government probably reduced the budgets of these organizations and um, now they can't cope mm. or um, they simply haven't been to get enough money to cover their costs, even though, I mean, it's the it's the weather service and it's, yeah. it's stats I say. These are, I, I'm assuming this isn't NASA or anything like that. No. Um <laughs> So yeah, it's but, but again, it's it's not surprising. I mean, uh, it's all about incentives. And mm. if the weather service was a private weather mm. service, we wouldn't be reading about this. And no. uh, maybe we would, and they would close down. But no. there would be another weather service yeah. to to do what what they were doing. Um, and it's not like that CEO destroyed that weather service will just be redeployed to another company. Mm -hmm. He will have a stain on his CV that people will take seriously. Mm -hmm. But in government, the incentives are so perverted that things like this happen and everyone shrugs their shoulders <laughs> and they're like, eh, sure, it's tough times, I guess. Uh, I can't really blame these people. It's like uh, Becky Tele a few months ago saying, yeah, no heads will roll at the police because crime rates are up because uh, it's so difficult. It's like, my goodness, people have some have some standard yeah, uh, yeah. for for excellence, but yeah, there's none of that, and you won't find that in government. Mm. Um, very rare, but you should never hedge your bets on on mm. that happening. I know, I know. I can't remember the last time I had uh, of anyone getting fired because they were incompetent or they did their job badly. Just... Has, has anyone ever written or applied the concept of the tragedy of the commons to like leadership and and mm. corruption and that sort of thing? Because I think we have that now. No one owns anything. Mm -hmm. And so things just fall apart and people sort of shrug and say, well, this is just the way things are going mm -hmm. now. We'll, we're on a downward, we'll hit, we'll go yeah. up again. It's sort of boom and bust. And Well, uh, I, public choice theory has done some things mm -hmm. like that because okay. they, they have shown that uh, the different incentives that apply to people as voters as opposed to actors in the mm -hmm. market mm -hmm. itself. So I think it, it sort of uh, gels with that uh, yeah. of the common story yeah. because what they showed was that uh, if, if as, as a voter, there's such there's, uh, the, the cost of voting or the cost of finding out about your uh, making a, 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 a decision that, that suits you mm. is so is so is so much higher than just not caring and just True. voting whichever way as opposed to in the markets where mm. you can actually lose your money. And so, yeah, actual skin in the game. Yeah, yeah no, I mean it's it's just so. I guess we we have a bit of an advantage here by being libertarians mm. and like almost having a, having an academic ability to like read about these principles. Mm. But to me, it's still shocking how privatization just solves these problems mm, yeah. so easily. Yeah. Like, I mean, in, in Johannesburg now, and I see this has actually been going on for months. There's been this campaign against illegal advertising, right, mm. on on street lampposts. So mm. if you see people advertising abortions and Viagra and those things, it's uh, usually an illegal thing that someone yes, has walked past and put there. And the city government is very concerned about this. They have a whole program and a whole campaign. They have staff going around mm. cleaning these things up, fining people. It's like a whole uh, unit, a project that mm. costs, I'm assuming, millions of rands a, a year at least. So if I not, think it's uh, more important than this potential drought we might have. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Come, come uh, the drought is small, small fry. Oh, okay. We have to deal well, with the illegal. When I drive down the road and I see an illegal abortion sign, I'm, I mean, I haven't showered for a week, but that's going to upset me a lot but, more. But I made a post on Facebook and I, and I criticized the government mm. for this, as I tend to do. And uh, other classical liberals, mm. libertarians came out and they said, whoa, yeah, you see now. This is why I don't go full libertarian. Because you see, you're going to allow people to put up... Uh, Ad advertisements for porn or something across the road from the school, and and I'm like, well, yes, but if the ro if the let, let's not say privatize the roads because if people just go don't touch the roads. people go insane. <laughs> people go insane when you say that. So 
<laughs> let's pri- let's prioritize the lampposts, ladies and gentlemen. Let's let's just do that. No. The problem disappears yeah. because it's no longer a common. Mm-hmm. It's it's no longer it doesn't belong to everyone. Yes. It doesn't belong to me or you. So we don't. Uh, um, the, the, the problem doesn't come up about who gives permission, and it's not government, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't fall for that fallacy. Um, if I'm the taxpayer, it's mine. I'll, I'll decide. So um, to interrupt your train of thought, but that yeah. if everyone owns something, no one owns. Exactly. It. Just keep that. In That's mind. the tragedy no. of the commons. Uh, so if if it's a privately owned lamppost, nobody needs to worry mm. because the owner will ensure it's a, it's it's in his own self interest mm. to ensure that that lamppost is available for paying advertisers. Mm. Who comply with his rules. Mm. It is the goose that lays the golden egg. For mm. the city government, they couldn't care less. They create this unit, yes, to show that they're doing something, but in actual fact, the, the incentives are so skewed and perverted, they don't care. Mm. But if I own that lamppost, I would care. I would be the one taking down the illegal advertisements. I'll be putting security there, mm. making sure that doesn't happen. The privatization just solves the problem. Mm. Yeah. Privatizing ESCOM will solve the problem. Privatizing Virtually anything will mm. solve virtually any problem. It very sounds very yeah. reductionist, very simplistic, but let's try it. Mm. We're, we're, the economy is collapsing. Let's just try it for mm. five mm. years or something. Let's see what happens. No. And I don't understand why uh, unions would be opposing privatizing all of these companies, because why can't they just go to government and say, okay, we think these things are assets, so give them to our members mm-hmm. and they'll run these things because they already mm-hmm. like give them shares in these things yeah. and then they'll run them and they'll run them profitably because we think they are profitable entities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the fact that they don't do that shows you what's actually going on here. Mm-hmm. They know that these things are not profitable. <laughs> they just want the state to continue subsidizing their yeah. own employment, subsidizing mm-hmm. their, 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 the, the existence of the unions indirectly mm-hmm. through the employment of their members. Exactly. And so this is uh, this is what's exactly what's happening. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's sad for the rest of the country because we have to bear the consequences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we're in an even more cheerful topic. <laughs> so the Deputy Finance Minister, uh, the David Masondo, was giving a speech to a group of investors. I, I forgot exactly where. So one of the points that he made was that uh, compensation uh, in terms of consolidated public spending across the entire country, compensation accounts for 30, 35% of South Africa spending. This is the wage bill. Is the wage bill, yes. Okay. So uh, compensation for yeah, all, all the all the people employed by the state, uh, the, the pension funds. Jeez, but that's, that's, that's massive. My that's goodness. Is, yeah, oh, that's that's more. yeah, no, I, uh, it seems conservative, well, but still, it's massive. They still they still SOEs. Oh, they right. still welfare. Uh, they're, they're uh, excluded. It's not a in. SOEs are excluded. The bailouts, yeah, no, they are excluded. No, no, no. I mean that the wage bill for wages you pay to your Oh employees. yes, yes, yes. Those those are excluded. They are only uh, talking about people who are hired by the government directly. Wow, <laughs> that seems intellectually dishonest at best. My goodness. But everyone does it across the world. They, they, ah. I don't know why, but they keep ex- everyone excludes SOEs like state owned companies. It's in know. the name, it says it's state owned. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, well, does ESCOM say also its name in brackets, state owned entity? Yeah, it's SOEC. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. so I thought this was if you put everything else we've talked about today and then you put this together. And then you realize that the government itself is saying it's in trouble. I mean, this 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 current deputy finance minister, I think he has a communist background. <laughs> so for him to be saying this is actually quite a... Wait, so he's saying that they should be frozen or yeah, public it, sector it, it, wages? He says all wages should be fell frozen, including okay. the, the wages for politicians. Sure. Yeah, he said starting with politicians good. and then going on with everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is a good proposal. Yeah, I'll read it to him. Yeah. Also in the same talk, he said that uh, we should be... Unleashing the full potential of pension funds. So you can interpret that <laughs> at least in two ways, I think. I think in one way you can say that that means that people must uh, take advantage of pension funds, invest more, save more, yeah, plan for your future, plan right? for their retirement. We must unleash the potential of what the pension fund could mean to our people. Yeah. And then there is the other way, which I'm really hoping he's not referring to, and that is that government is going to nationalize our pension funds and unleash their full potential to the benefit of our state and enterprises. But I'm sure he didn't mean that. Well, the, the, the context, uh, if the context is solving the problem that government faces itself with, which is this looming fiscal cliff, I think that's, it can only be one thing. I mean, unless they are talking about offering incentives, maybe t- cutting your taxes if you invest in these uh, mm. entities or mm. something. If it's that kind of program, it will okay. It will not be too bad. It won't will, will be as bad as just seizing people's pension funds. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like it's uh, 
uh, he also said in the same talk that they don't want to force workers to invest in unproductive entities. So I don't know how they oh, square that exactly. Because the, the government, if the government is defining what is productive and not productive, then I, think, I don't see the point. There's yeah. no sort of connection between A, B, and A plus B equals C. Mm. High spending, low economic growth equals uh, you know disaster. Exactly. There's no, I don't know. There's no. There's nothing bridging the gap. There. I, I realize the sort of ideological background, but where do you? When do you realize that you can't? You can't spend money you don't have. Well, to an extent, I think if you look at the countries that have already collapsed, look at the Central African Republic, mm. for instance, it's not like the politicians there are living in poverty. So no, I, sure, sure. I think to an extent our elite or some of the elite, and I want to brush literally all politicians mm. as being equally responsible in this regard, but mm. I think many of them think, yeah, okay, the economy is collapsing, everyone's going to be poor. Mm. Uh, we'll lose our reputation, but I will still live the high life, basically, yeah, because I have the guns. I have the guns, and unfortunately, I still have the imagination of many people. People think we're trying our best, mm -hmm. and it's just a bad economy. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, yeah I, Mugabe went to Singapore for his health care and stuff. Yeah, so. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's not like there was ever a Zimbabwean uprising, mm -hmm. or there was a little coup, but yeah, other than that, there was no rebellion against his rule. Mm -hmm. So for the longest time, he got away with... Mm -hmm this wrecking his country's economy mm. and staying in power living a high life yeah. so i think that's something we shouldn't uh exclude i mm. mean when we say geez government uh, must have a healthy economy for itself to do well yes. but they're like they're, they're they'd rather have the control mm. than mm. have a prospering society mm -hmm. which they still govern mm. over so yeah i think it at the end of the day it comes back to ideology mm. they want control they want to die as a good marxist and as mm. all all good communists or dead communists but uh that's no. that's how they want to be no, remembered. To yeah go <laughs> uh, so that's uh to me it's it just becomes clear every day that mm. it's ideological mm. and that that includes many of the so-called reformists mm. in our government mm. that we get so excited about it mm. seems like at the end of the day they're they didn't really believe in, in mm. the reforms that we attribute to them. So right. specifically our president, mm. uh, he was not the Margaret Thatcher uh, version for the person for South Africa. <laughs> not even Mbeki was, even though he called himself Thatcher. Mm. Right? So yeah, they they're dedicated to ideology, and uh, they all see the economy collapse before mm. then. And I think the only way for us to really solve the problem is for ordinary South Africans to come to the same realization and think, wow, geez, you're leading us into, into destruction. Mm. Um, because too many South Africans still and right now think that we're just a victim of tough economic times. So, this is a, a artificial phenomenon that has been manufactured. Mm. It is not something that just happened. This mm, is something yeah. that has been imposed on our mm, economy. Mm. And I think people need to realize that. And the, the, even uh, at some point, we might talk about this in a future episode. This idea of tough economic times, like I mean, it's uh, individuals can experience tough economic times. Yeah. It's an aberration when an entire economy is yes. like mm -hmm. that takes government. It doesn't. It doesn't happen naturally. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, all of sub-Saharan Africa, I think, with no exception, is growing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, yeah. the only exception, of course, is South Africa. <laughs> I mean, it can't just be that. And then they keep saying, "Oh, it's because our economy is very concentrated in the hands yeah. of a few companies," and it's like. Yeah, okay, but many, there are economies like this and they're still growing. Mm. We had this in, in the late 90s. We had even fewer companies, le lower concentration, mm. and we had real good economic growth mm. because for the briefest moment, uh, our government had a very clear privatization agenda. Mm. They privatized uh, ISCOR. Um, I think they privatized so many unknown uh, state-owned enterprises. And we had great economic growth. Mm. And uh, you, if you look at um, a graph that was created by The Economist a few years ago, it shows that the income of all population groups, blacks, whites, coloreds, and Indians, skyrocketed, mm. especially whites and Indians. Mm. Um, but everyone's went up. And then you can see, like, around the turn of the century, the, the uh, income of colored and black individuals mm. plateaued. Mm. And that's when the labor laws were mm. signed into law. So... You can just you can see it on a picture how it's the, the government that is strangling the economy. Mm. It's uh, like you say it's it's an it's something that happens to individuals. Everyone has tough times, but it cannot just be a coincidence mm. that out of all of sub-Saharan Africa, 
tough economic times have honed in on South Africa. Mm. That's that's bizarre. Of course, it's this mm. government, yeah. and it's and it's not the corruption of this government. It's not the, the incompetence of this government. The failure to implement our good laws that we have mm. in South Africa. It is because to the extent that we have those laws, that they are implemented. Yeah, yeah. That is the reason we have low economic yeah, growth. Yeah. We need to get rid of those laws and those policies, and then we can still have the corruption, the incompetence, but then there will there will be growth. Mm. And I, I would argue that the government actually prefers the concentration in the economy that yeah. we have, because it allows it allows them to enforce their dictates more yes. easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you had like millions and millions of small companies, it would yeah. be a nightmare to enforce yeah. regulation. Mm-hmm. But if it's only a few big companies, you can say, hey, no. Mm-hmm. And they'll, you know, they'll just do what you want them yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. You know? And yes. they'll also get a benefit out of it, which is that they'll, they'll be able to keep out their small competitors. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is not to like make light of, I think, the impact and the history of our of South Africa with apartheid and colonialism. But if you are truly so concerned about um, inequality, the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few, you wouldn't want more state controls because then mm-hmm. the state can simply decide who wins mm-hmm. and who loses. Exactly. Yeah. You would want... If you really think white people control the economy, you would want them to have to compete with yes, black people and exactly, exactly. Chinese yeah. people. Let them stand or fall on their own two feet. Don't yeah. let them control the politicians if you think, I, I don't know, if you believe, if you're a supporter of Jacob Zuma and you think Ramaphosa is controlling everything, you would want some competition. Yes. Why do you want... You know? This is actually one of the best teams running through the Tito's uh, Now Dead plan. Mm. Which was that the way to break this concentration is to have more competition. Yes, mm. exactly. Because like it, it's the most simplest, most mm. obvious thing. Everyone knows it's talk to an average patrol on the street and understand competition how and how it works. Mm. But somehow when it goes to government it just becomes something else. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I mean um I, I read an article recently and I think this has been known for a while now, but in the United States poverty rates were declining mm. up until Lyndon Johnson yeah. Declare the war on poverty. <laughs> so, and I mean, and we see this in South Africa during the transition. While government was not rolling out massive social programs, mm. there was actual economic growth, yep. increase in incomes. Mm. But the moment government says, oh, we need to help the poor more, uh, they do worse. Mm. So, I mean, uh, I've, I've said this a few times. If if you want to get rid of poverty, mm. you need to stop trying. Yeah. That is the only way you get rid of poverty yeah. is to stop trying to get rid of it mm. because it will be gotten rid of by itself, by the market. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't have a formula for you. I'm not a, a Keynesian or a cla- yeah. neoclassical economist, but this is just what tends to happen mm. around the world. Yeah. It's not rocket science. It's not like I think less regulations, more economic freedom, more individual freedom. It's not just like... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe people I, think it's it's this so this aber- it is an aberration in history. I think that's my theory. It does go against sort of historical trends. Yeah. But where the places where it, it's it's it gets to breathe more, that's where you see more real progress. Mm-hmm. Not artificial stuff like in North Korea where they tell their citizens they're going to the moon and stuff when mm-hmm. you tell people a fake reality. Yeah. Um, but it's not. It's really not like we're advocating for something that's completely out of the remit of human na- human action. It's mm-hmm. not even going to nature and nurture, all that stuff, but just mm-hmm. this, you know, I don't know, this like idea of self-ownership and individual yeah. responsibility, individual freedom. It, mm-hmm. it doesn't, maybe I'm just too in the mm-hmm. in the position, but I don't see it as this like crazy, no. loony, kooky thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. And just on this point about uh, what happens when people, when government tries to defeat poverty by spending money on it, the problem is that you have now added to government the responsibility of spending money on poverty. So you're saying to government, we'll give you more money if there's more poverty. Mm. Now, that's, that cannot end well. No. It's, it's a terrible no. Yeah. Exactly. No. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's what we have in South Africa, no. I guess. We'll, we have to accept that we'll have, we'll going, we are going to have more poverty for a while. And mm. I mean, as much as uh, charitable organizations and everyone who cares will try, mm. if government is, has these kinds of policies in the post, poverty will stay with us for a long time. Yeah. Mm. And it's just, I, I, sometimes it irritates me when people say, oh, no, but you are, why are you always saying government, this government is, why are you, you, you're not trying to solve uh, this problem? I'm saying, I am by telling government to stop stopping people, for people from getting <laughs> themselves of poverty. Yeah. That's like, it, it, some things are just, like they have all the guns, people. Like it's not like we are where we can just ignore ignore the regulations, ignore the laws, and just do whatever we want. Mm. They throw you in prison. Yeah, yeah, and I mean it's not intuitive. I, uh, unfortunately, this is a very unintuitive position mm. from us as free marketers. Mm. You can only solve poverty by 
stepping back. Mm, yeah. That is the only way. It sounds very counterintuitive. Yeah. But, I mean, we see this around the world. The Scandinavian countries, which all socialists love to point to as successful examples of government intervention, they didn't become rich through government intervention. Mm. It's not like there was massive poverty in Scandinavia. Right. And then when government implemented its welfare programs, it, they, they became the richest countries yeah. in the world. Mm. They were the richest countries in the world <laughs> when they implemented yeah. their welfare yes. programs. Yeah. They got to that position because there was already virtually no poverty mm. and they got there through free markets, individual responsibility, enterprise. Mm. And then they said, okay, so we can afford it. It's still a very bad idea, but we can, uh, we can have a welfare sure. state. And now they have it. Yeah. Same in Germany, the Netherlands, etc. No, there is... I would please, please, if you can find an example for me, I would, I would really appreciate it. Any country, any society in the world that became wealthy mm. through government welfare spending. Yeah. Please, mm. please, just show me. I would love to have more information on this. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the but I would yeah. want to see that, and I think you are going to be unable to find that because you, you can't have economic growth with that. It's like plugging a plug back into itself. You cannot do that. You need to. You that's need renewable to, energy, though. Isn't yes, it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you need the productive forces in a society, which is always going to be private individuals with a maybe, profit motive. Martin, maybe let's raise the stakes a little bit. I'll transfer 10 rands a time to your phone number <laughs> <laughs> if you can find the, a country that became well, more yeah. through government intervention. Yes, please, please. Yeah. Yep. No, I think yeah, I think we're done for the. No, I'm, for the I'm week. not gonna put in on the wages. So <laughs> yeah, what happens here? Yeah, yeah we're, too we're, we're, all, we're all away next week. Uh, you guys are going to the liber uh, libertarian seminar, and yeah. I'm going yeah. to a conference on African free trade. Mm. And so uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a completion of interview or something. But we'll see in time. But uh, there won't be a normal podcast next week. Just know that. Mm. And then uh, I think Martin, you can give us the social media. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, and just one thing: uh, if you want to stop this prescribed assets thing, this uh, pension fund thing, please look at the Institute of Race Relations. They're doing a lot of good work on on uh, fighting prescribed assets. Uh, please uh, give them your support if, if uh, mm. you feel as strongly about this as we do. Mm. But as always, please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's the big red button right under this video. Uh, follow us on Facebook. That is Free Market Foundation South Africa or uh, in the URL, facebook.com slash FMFSA. And uh, please follow us on Twitter. That is at FMF South Africa, one word. And of course, uh, our website is always being updated with new content. That is freemarketfoundation.com. Uh, see you in two weeks. Please enjoy your weekend and next week. Cheers.